Aya Ajita Ta Takodoa Chalagia Yedli Asenia So my name is Jeff Mortassel, I'm from Cherokee Nation, and it's good to be here, uh, to be welcomed onto Kanaka Maoli territory, and to be part of this exchange that we've done, uh, as uh, Dayage uh, pointed out, since 2006, uh, with uh, Hokulani Aikau and Noi Noi Silva and uh, Noalani Goodyear. Um, so it's a real pleasure to be here, and thank you. I guess, uh, get right to the point, since uh, we have about 10 minutes or so, you know, kind of building on uh, what Dayage was saying, you know, a lot of our program asks the question of, you know, what is the true source of our sovereignty? What is the true source of our self-determining authority? Where, does, where do those things come from? And how do we divert our attention away from those politics of distraction, as Graham Smith would say, uh, politics of distraction, and, you know, which have those limitations uh, as being uh, state-centered, as being centered in a more corporate environment. Things like rights, a rights discourse, which at times can take us away from the land. Uh, things like focusing on our land as resources, right, which can lead to more of an extractivist mentality. Uh, in Canada, things like reconciliation, right, which can lead to uh, really a compromise position in terms of uh, how our people need to heal, but also how our people need to decolonize and get back on the land. And for me, it's uh, since the theme of the talk is about bearings, it's about getting our bearings, getting our, our kind of understanding uh, aligned. And that's why I start even with that introduction. That's part of my bearing, right? It's giving you a sense of where I come from, um, you know, where I dance, where I, where I have my center, where I have that, that commitment to family. But also, I think in our program, we try to cultivate these notions of indigenous leadership that are outside the bounds of uh, kind of uh, state governance, right? And I think an important part of that, as I understand it from talking to uh, Shalagi Elder Benny Smith, is the first part of that starts with the individual, and it starts with a kind of re-envisioning of what we want. It could start with the dream, it could start with all these different powerful ways of, of thinking about what we want for our people, what we want for our families. And then it builds from there, because part of that commitment of envisioning something, as uh, Tayage envisioned the Indigenous Governance Program in 1999, and put that into place, right? Part of that process is acting on it. And that's probably the most difficult part, or one of the most difficult parts. Uh, putting that into your everyday actions and making it a part of your life coming on the heels of that or maybe happening simultaneously is making it relatable to other people. So that relatability, you know, we think of uh, my trainings in political science and I jokingly say I'm a recovering political scientist, uh, trying to shed a lot of that jargon, trying to shed a lot of that training that, that occurred, but also taking parts of it and uh, using it to create new dialogues, create new discussions. Uh, but it's that relatability. I think that's where a lot of academics get stuck in terms of uh, making it relatable uh, so that folks can incorporate that, uh, those teachings into their everyday actions. And then it's mobilizing, right? It's mobilizing for change. So it's not necessarily sequential, but it's something that, that's embodied by a spirit of, of Shalagi leadership. And I think you think of uh, Leanne Simpson's uh, notion of of responsibility, it's something that radiates outward. And we, I think a lot of us have teachings that relate to um, responsibility that are, that are similar. It's leadership by example. So in that sense, you know, I think when, we, when I think of my bearings, when I think of our home places, I think of Kadua Mount, for example, a place where our ancient fire was kept, uh, the perpetual fire was kept uh, up until the 1770s. And during that time, uh, the ground was approached on by U.S. forces, um, and it was taken, right? So it was taken from us. And yet, that continuity was there, right? Cherokees are still going to that mound and, and paying honor to that place, still taking care of that place, even though it wasn't visible to the colonizer, even though it wasn't necessarily acknowledged by other outside forces. And I think of, uh, you know, things like Kadua, you know, 
Then his method said, if you practice the ways of Kedua, there'll be a return to it. And I've thought about those words and think about if you practice those ways, there'll be a return, a resurgence. There'll be a regeneration of those ways in much the same way that I talked about leadership. There'll be a, uh, a renewal of that commitment to that place. So I'm happy to say Kedua Mound has ceremonies on it again. And it's being cared for in the way uh, that I think a lot of our ancestors would would acknowledge and, and understand. The other side of that is, you know, in our relationship to the land and to the water, um, it's not as important as Leroy Little Bear says uh, whether you recognize those places. It's whether those places recognize you and the relationships you have to them. Right? So what relationships do you have to the land and to the water? So these are questions that we use to challenge our students, to challenge other folks that we encounter, but also, more importantly, to challenge ourselves um, in, in terms of discussing resurgence and in ways that we continue on. I think uh, it's a natural you know, that we have this, this solidarity with, with uh, Kanaka Maui and, and the uh, the strength of that solidarity is based on those experiences, those land-based, those water-based experiences that we share. And one of the things that we're doing in our program is we're, it's been a seven-year odyssey, <laughs> but we're building a canoe. And we've been working with that uh, Tomosin, who's a um, uh, Sartlet First Nation carver. And one of the things that our program manager at the time asked him is, what haven't you done that you'd like to do? He said, a canoe. And so that's been a collaborative effort on the part of our students, folks from community, uh, to help uh, Tomosing kind of realize this, this vision, this dream uh, of completing this canoe. And interestingly, the name of the canoe, one of the names, um, is Chilangi. And I think that really relates nicely to uh, what Vince and, and Diage were talking about and even the, the vision for this conference. It's our sovereignty, our ancestry, our birthright, right? This is a realization of all of those things. It's a Sanchapa term, right? But it's, it's also the Kuliana, right? The Kuliana, uh, that responsibility uh, to ensure that those things are, are practiced and acted upon, right? It's one thing to talk about things like sovereignty, it's another thing to act on it and to assert it. And I think um, the canoe is part of that vision in terms of uh, it's going to be a traveling canoe. It's a 40-foot cedar, red cedar canoe. Uh, I'm happy to say it's taking shape. And I'm going to go out on a limb like I do every year and for seven years and say that it's almost done. It's ready to go into the water. Maybe it's just better left as a metaphor, I don't know. <laughs> but the Chilangan uh, has been this long process, and we've had, I think, tied into that, uh, we've had several students that have worked on that, on that canoe uh, as part of their community governance project. And that kind of gets to that leadership aspect that uh, Diage and others were talking about um, earlier, is putting that leadership into direct practice. So one of the things that our program does is we've eliminated the thesis option, eliminated that altogether. And there's only a community governance project, which is the equivalent of a practicum, I guess, or experiential learning kind of component. And that's your capstone for your, for your master's degree. Um, and that capstone is really uh, a directed project by someone in community of your choosing, right? So you choose who you work with, who supervises your work, and it's that mentorship, it's that kind of master apprenticeship kind of uh, project that, that has given life to so many different important, uh, I'd say, initiatives on the land and on the water. And so the canoe is part of that as well, the Chilangan. And we've had people do uh, uh, community gardens uh, with folks in Sartlet. We've had folks do uh, work on important issues related to fisheries, right, and protecting uh, and rejuvenating traditional fisheries uh, mechanisms. Right? So there's so much potential there. So you essentially work for three months or four months under the supervision of someone in the community, and the important thing is that something uh, that comes out of that is put into use by that particular community. Uh, 
and it's got to be put into use in, in a practical way, right? So it could be a video, it could be the actual you know, uh, canoe, it could be you know uh, a plan for a particular, let's say, a community garden. All these things that are in, in conjunction with community, and some of the things that we have coming up relate to uh, the struggles to defend the land. So we have folks in Wet'suwet'en, for example, that are doing what they call life schools, right? Where they're living on the land and teaching the young ones uh, how to uh, protect and defend the land, but also live with the land. So that that land recognizes you, right? So that that water recognizes you as having a distinct relationship to that place uh, in the universe. I won't go on too much longer, um, but I think you know it's a matter of what we what we continue to feed in our daily lives. You know, what relationships are we nurturing and honoring and reawakening? Are we reawakening the relationships of a market-driven mentality? Are we reawakening or renewing those commitments to a consumerist mentality? How are we diverting our attention away from those things into ways to strengthen and honor our, our I guess, our roots, our kuleana, to indigenous nationhood, to that notion of self-determining authority? And how are we doing that in our day-to-day -day practices? We think of it as uh, one warrior at a time. And so it happens through those directed mentorships. It happens on small scale. Uh, but in the case of some of our, our uh, attempts to, to build a movement or to build a larger vision uh, for what can happen, uh, we reach out. We need that help. We need, um, uh, we need that solidarity in order to, to promote a larger vision and, and to put that into action uh, for resurgence. So it ends with how, do we, how will the land and water recognize you? And in that sense, Remembering and reawakening those those ancient relationships, that's a form of renewal, but it's also a form of resurgence. So what well, don't thank you.